Hi team, welcome back. So today we're going to be going through the results from the part one video. For the guys who haven't checked out that video and don't know what we're going to be analysing today, jump back across, check that one out. So what we're trying to do here is check out a velocity node and establish what sort of seeding depth I can sort of hone in on when we get some fire form stuff. So like I said before, we're trying to fire form brass and get some rounds down the tube just to see if anything's going to change. We're just trying to establish a baseline or just some initial data to revert back to if I have to. But the things that we can test is our seating depth and get a rough idea of what the velocity is going to be doing. Uh, I did want to hone in on that 41.7 uh, charge weight because that's what the other four, four barrels, I think it was, uh, had settled at and they've all been around that 2800. Um, so what we'll do now is jump in straight into the data. So this here is the powder weight charge um, graph with lot 7092. The reason why I've done that is because I tested another lot while I was out there because this lot is actually starting to run a little bit low and I just wanted to, while I was doing it, I just wanted to test this other lot out basically. So it was pretty much exactly what I was hoping to see. So you can see that 41.7 is sitting dead on around that 28, 2805 um, feet per second. And I've got a good little flat spot there to work with. Uh, we started off, uh, 41 grains was 2760. Um, everything outside those green dotted lines had an SD or 15 of above basically. And as soon as we honed into that 2800 feet per second, the SDs dropped to uh, around six and seven. So I'll put, I'll put some screenshots of that up now. Um, but the next graph is just an overlay of the next batch that I had. So this one here is um, number 7310. So I just want to test this one out because this is probably the one that I'm going to be using. Uh, so it ended up being around 35 feet per second slower, roughly. But the interesting thing is, is you can see that as soon as we got to that 2800 again, that's where the flat spot was. So even though it was lower in feet per second or velocity, as soon as I reached that velocity node, that it seems to be a nice little happy spot there. As soon as you can get to that 2800, the numbers again dropped from SDs of 15, uh, dropped straight down to an SD of 6.7, I think it was. Um, so it matched the same data as the, um, the previous lot. It was just a different powder charge. So, the interesting thing there is as long as you can get to that 2800, I know I now mean, I know that I'll have to change the powder weights, but I can safely say that as long as I can get to that 2800 for ongoing testing or batches, I can just quickly try to get to that 2800 and I know I'm going to be good to go. So now we'll look at the, the group sizes. So before we go into the group sizes, for me, I just look for something that's 0.5 or under or in the vicinity of that. Um, reason being, on our courses we run uh, some, a program called uh, the WIS from Applied Ballistics. So this here that I'll just pop up now is basically just the data of the 140 grain Creedmoor, um, 6.5 Creedmoor, sorry, running at 2808, which is the flat spot that we're looking at for both those powder charges. If we go across to a 0.5 MOA group, so this here is a shot simulator. If I, with all the uncertainties uh, taken care of, and we're judging the wind to within one mile per hour, so all things equal apart from group size, we are looking at 98.7% hit rate for a half minute rifle at a one MOA target at a thousand yards or 900 meters. So that's good, 98.7. So the difference, between that and wrong way, between that and a quarter MOA rifle, with again all things taken care of, apart from group size, it's 99.1 for a 10-inch circle at a thousand meters, a uh, thousand yards. So you're only gaining 0.4%. So I don't really care about that. As long as I, I'm still going to take notice of vertical, obviously, for obvious reasons, but. As long as I can get a nice little circular group at 0.5 under, I'm happy with that. All right, so what do the groups look like? So this here, like I said, I started at uh, a base to O-Driver 2.160. 
uh, which was 50 thou off. So I started there, and if you want to know why I start there, go back and check out the PRB website. So we are looking at 50 thou jump. We're looking at a 13 mil group, so just over 0.5 uh, of an inch, 55 thou jump. It goes up slightly, 14 mil. I didn't bother firing uh, any more rounds of that because I wasn't happy with that. Going up again, so we're looking at 56 thou jump. We're looking at a 15 mil group or a 0.6 inch group. This is all at 100 meters as well. And now we're at 60 thou, which is where I initially wanted to start honing in on. And you can see straight away that it's dropped down to a 10, uh, 10 mil group uh, with a 0.5 MOA. 63 thou, it shrunk again to six mil group, quarter MOA group, happy with that. The next one is, it opened up a bit to 12 mil with a 0.47 MOA group. This, the first three shots all fell on top of each other and the fourth one was low. I'm taking it for what it is, it, it's low, but I'm just, I'm still not too sure about that one. And the reason being is if I go to 70 thou, the four shots stack on each other again. So that's at 70 thou jump. Now, if I go to 73 thou, you can start seeing that vertical come in and that there was a more representation of what a group should look like uh, when it's starting to open up. So that there was a 30 mil, so that's still a usable group. I'd still be happy with 73 thou. So really I've got a 13 thou window to play with. So for me, if I was going off that data right now, which I'm going to be, I will load up 41.7 with that first batch at 60 thou jump, base to O-drive at 2.150. So I will load the rest of my rounds up at 60 thou jump. And then as that throat erodes or grows, I've got 13 thou window to play with. So that's the data from it. So the next video will be uh, how we're going to prep this fire form brass, how we're going to get the numbers, get it all ready, prepped, cleaned. We'll run it through the amp annealer, um, <coughs> excuse me, and then we will jot the data down to go back to and go out and confirm this and hopefully it's all the same. If not, we've got a baseline to come back and revisit and have a look at now. So that's what the next video will be with guys. Um, hopefully he's enjoying the series. If you want me to add any more stuff in or revisit something, uh, just jot it down in the comments and we'll uh, jot back in and revisit it at the end. Or if we've got time, I might just punch out a quick one, two minute video explaining um, that bit in more process. So I'll catch you in part three guys.